The IoT is the government's response to addressing our shortage in level four and level five higher technical qualifications. We do really well at A-levels, we do really well at degrees, that middle bit is missing and this is our response. We're coming into a position with the economy now where there is an awful lot of skills gaps within the current workforce. That's because significant people with technical skills who, who do need that sort of level four and five qualification are now retiring. GIST firmly recognises that the education sector also needs to change. We want to provide thought leadership to ensure that the Institute really is on the cusp of innovation, a talent pipeline for people straight into jobs and people who could go on from these qualifications and into higher education too. So GIST's involvement in the IoT has been really important, both from their, their sector-wide perspective, shaping an education experience that is fit for this new world, this new way of working, the new skills we're seeing, the new careers that are emerging. Some haven't even emerged yet, you know, how are we going to be prepared for that? And how can we create a model that is going to be really flexible to that? And then bringing that into building a solution like the virtual classroom, you know, using some technologies that, you know, are from industry, you know, how are we building this out? And, and, and certainly working with Simon and the GIST team and that has been really helpful um, with their wealth of knowledge in that area. I think the reality of, of, of how um, the world is changing um, lends itself very, very well towards the, the, the new demands on teaching and learning. Not everybody can get into a city centre, for instance, for a campus experience. And they shouldn't be disadvantaged for not being able to do that or not wanting to do that. The virtual classroom is a concept we've been working on for a little while. As I said, it's been reprioritised really with the, with the pandemic. What we're creating here is the ability for a lecturer or a teacher to stand up in front of some screens as if they were standing up in front of a class and deliver their uh, material uh, in, in, in that way. The remote one, same kind of thing really, where the, the, the lecturer has the ability to show people what's going on. You know, literally lathes and, and wind tunnels, whatever it happens to be. And individuals will be able to take that out and apply that as much as what they're learning uh, as the experience of how they've learned it. How we're going to use that Barco room is very much linking to remote collaboration, remote problem solving with different groups of learners. That's what we're seeing in the workplace right now. We're seeing more of that type of activity, that those ways of working are happening. The real key impact of this space is that it enables us to do digital delivery, be able to teach over distance, provide all that flexibility, but it doesn't lose that human connectivity element, which is so important right now. The example we're doing at the moment um, with, with Barco is uh, a great example of cloud-based processing. So all of the heavy lifting's going on in the cloud, connected to the GISC infrastructure. If you've got that capacity to connect, you can then start to virtualize the campus. So, you know, the potential there is, is absolutely enormous. The focus for us is how can we use technology to connect and create a community, less about content. Quite often we focus on technology or education technology just being about content. This is around connectivity and community. How can we bring that group together? And that includes the employers, so if we can get our learners and staff collaborating, working together, teaching and learning in this shared space. How We can draw employers into that space. We can connect with them, bring the employer to the learners, take the learners perhaps to the employers through virtual means. So these are, this is the, the environment we're trying to create with technology. I, I recommend anyone uh, to look at that full portfolio of resources and services that are available through JISC. Reach out to your JISC account manager if you have these problems and challenges that you're trying to solve. For solutions like this, the ability to knit together the, the constituent parts to a solution is, is really important. So we spent a lot of time working with John here at Western to understand exactly what he wants to achieve. We've delivered you know, a, a blueprint really that means a lot of it's repeatable now. I would really love to have thousands of IoT learners um, across the whole region all actively engaged and promoting technical learning and the benefits to the wider economy. I think will have a massive digital transformation and I really want the IoT to be at the heart of that and really upskilling the workforces to be able to develop and evolve uh, over the next five years.